Uh, and I guess we want to launch right into callers, right? Yeah, let's talk to the people. Okay, uh, then we've got somebody in Queens. <laughs> uh, Sid, seems like. Yeah. Oh, it's Sid, right. Sid okay. in Queens. Is first uh, yes. uh, hello? Hi. Hello. You're on. <coughs> oh, hi. Uh, no, my name is Caesar. Oh, C- uh, Caesar. Okay. My email name. Uh, well, you guys can hear me, right? Yes. No, we can hear you great. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, first of all, I um, want to apologize if I'm a little bit nervous. So, oh, that's uh, all right. Uh, okay. You're you're just going out to a bunch of idiot atheists on the internet. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> wonderful. We love our fans and we love us and <laughs> we love atheists. Uh, yeah, um, I'm a terrible that's the, PR that's one person. Of the reasons why I call because uh, I have no atheist friends to debate with. So okay, you know, okay. I can try it out here, and this is my third time calling. Okay. And um, Actually, I'd like to talk about a subject that I'm kind of surprised isn't talked about often in your show, which is the the near-death experience. Okay. All right. Yeah, and um, the near-death experience is something like of a hobby of mine. I really know about on it a lot, you know, just, you know, nothing serious. So I know a bit about it. I'm not, I'm not an expert, though. But I find it uh, utterly fascinating because um, I've heard... The skeptics saying, you know, that it's really just the uh, the brain going through like a dying process, uh, chemicals, or um, you know, the brain's going haywire and it's making you hallucinate at the time of death. And mm-hmm. um, and actually, I can't. Sorry, uh, no one can actually. I can't say yes or no. That's what's really happening. But the but when I look at the uh, at the actual experience. It kind of points to uh, a direction where that's not what's happening at all. That it's not has nothing to do with the brain or any material explanation in you know in that way. Can you and give that's it, what I would like to talk about. Can you give an example of one of these experiences and what about it makes you think that it's got nothing to do with your brain get, getting a little wonky? Yeah, there's so many, but uh, like the most. I don't know if it's the most famous one. It's the one with uh, Howard Storm. I don't know if you heard of the guy. Storm? Mm, nope. Howard Storm. Yeah, okay. he's uh, he used to be a professor um, of art. I forgot which uh, university. But um, I've seen him being interviewed several times, so I know his particular uh, ND experience pretty well. And he was a hardcore atheist, uh, kind of like you guys. You know, he's a... Uh, very intellectual, but he's not. He doesn't go out of his way, you know, to, to, you know, debate atheism or like theists or whatever. But if somebody comes up to him and um, talk about atheism, theism, he's totally an atheist. So you know, he t- totally does not believe in God or religion. And um, he had an experience, and his experience, his near-death experience, totally changed his life, and he gave up his. Uh, his, uh, he was an art professor, he gave that up, and uh, he became um, a minister, or, or I think a minister of some sort, I'm not 100% sure on what, but can we talk about that? Sure. Well, okay. I mean, in as much as neither of us really are familiar with Howard Storm, I don't really know that we can, until we read up on him and, and, yeah. and study him a little bit, we can't really respond to what you know we think about his particular experience. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I wouldn't but, want to launch into something blind. I mean, I, I am certainly aware that people go from being atheists to being theists all the time, just like people go from being theists to being atheists, or they go from Christians to being Jews, or whatever. Um... Uh, one person's changing their mind, while interesting in itself, uh, is like an anecdote. And oh, okay, um, yeah. I see. Yeah, uh, when you know, actually, uh, about the near death experience, um, mm-hmm. most atheists, and I wish I had the figures, but uh, I want to talk about percentages here. Like over ninety five percent of atheists who have the near death experience all of a sudden become theists. They're, they're no longer atheists. Well, you know, so over 98% <laughs> of statistics are made up on the spot, you know, so I don't know exactly <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you, ha- that if you had an from. actual study to point out, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, point, well, explaining, yeah. uh, explaining how they selected their sample set, then we might have something to discuss. But, I mean, obviously we can't really talk about... Some, something random thrown out like 95% that we have no way of verifying. Okay. 
Well, I, that's an educated guess. I mean, I don't have the wait, exact... Wait, is it a guess? An educated guess? I thought well, you yeah, said... I mean, like, when yeah. I read up on these things, every every uh, NDE case involving an atheist, he becomes... Uh, he converts to... Well, I mean, of course, when you read a story about it, it usually involves an atheist having a near-death experience and changing his mind, because a story where, like... An atheist was near death and then experienced something weird and then wasn't convinced by it doesn't tend to get written down or noticed by anybody. Yeah, and a lot of these sources that you might be reading and and, and until you know, without knowing exactly what they are, but I suspect that you have been reading a lot of sources that might be websites, they might be books, and these are probably written by people who are in what you might call the paranormal community or something. They're, they're believers in these kinds of phenomenons. And so they're phenomena, excuse me. And so they're usually going to, it's in their interests. The, the converting the skeptic uh, theme is prevalent in a lot of stories about whether it's ghosts or UFOs or the Loch Ness Monster or this or that. You frequently find stories being told about, oh, and, and you, sometimes people will just say it to themselves, like, I was a total unbeliever until this happened to me, and now I've changed. These are very, very frequent themes that come up in these kinds of stories. So because we hear it so often and because we know it's part of the sales pitch for these beliefs, um, you know, we tend to be very you know, skeptical about that sort of thing. And uh, also, you know, knowing that near-death experience uh, is a phenomenon that has been studied, and in fact, the the actual experience of what is reported to be going on during an NDE, such as you know going down the tunnel of light and having you know feeling disconnected from your body, etc., 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 these feelings have been artificially induced, okay, by stimulating the brain, right? <coughs> I mean, it's, well, you know, uh, there. Uh, no, that's so well, we can, something it, we can talk about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So it's um, been done. It's kind of known to be some sort of you know brain phenomenon All right. right also another thing that this illustrates is basically that uh, that a lot of times conversions happen under emotional duress i mean frequently when when uh, a, a question that we get thrown at us frequently is why did you become an atheist did some big major traumatic event happen to you and usually the conversion from theism to atheism happens over a long period of time with a long period of, of self-reflection because there's no like sudden emotional flash that happens uh, when somebody has a very uh, tr when when somebody has a very sudden traumatic emotional experience, that's the time when you're least likely to get accurate information out of uh, out of that person. So I mean, even if a hundred percent of the people who converted um, uh, who experienced these things wound up converting. It wouldn't actually demonstrate that they were right. Yeah, that, that there was some real phenomenon going on. You'd have to test it. You'd have to come find some way to test it, kind of independently, and and you know, base your results not just on, oh, well, this happened to me and it changed my life. All that proves is that something happened to a group of people, and their response to it was they changed their ways. Right. But but we still don't know exactly what it was that happened. It also, could just be a brain chemistry phenomenon, or it could be some sort of external phenomenon also that yet we I'd can't determine. Also, I'd be curious to know if all of them like converted to Christianity. I mean, if you experience this in a predominantly Hindu country, yeah. do you suddenly have this revelation like, oh, wait, this Jesus guy that I heard once a really long time ago yeah. uh, is, is the answer. I know that now from the thing, you know, from this experience I just had. Yeah, do people have have NDEs and then become Zoroastrians, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting that no matter where you find conversion stories taking place, it usually tends to be a conversion to, stroke of luck, what just happens to be the majority religion of that culture anyway. So, you know. Well, that's not surprising. I mean, you're going to go to, uh, to a religion that might be more comforting to you, but... Mm -hmm. The thing but, is, is that. But this is the point. Can, this is the point. Let me th that, if you were to say have a record of this kind of phenomenon taking place, let's say some sort of primitive tribal culture out in you know darkest Africa or the Australian outback or someplace like that, right? 
where these are primitive peoples who have never had any exposure whatsoever to, say, the Bible or Christian teachings, right? Someone who has never in his entire life had that kind of experience, uh, that kind of religious education, that background. He experiences some sort of NDE or some kind of phenomenon and suddenly becomes a believer in Jesus, even though there's absolutely nothing in his culture... I think it would to, be really hard to screen out w- how much contamination. I mean, you know, yeah, but I'm, I'm how giving much just sort of a, they ha- actually. But have. I'm giving kind of a general example of if 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 this sort of thing were to happen, where you would have a Christian conversion in a place where you would not be likely to have that sort of thing happen anyway, you know, in the first place, then that might be an interesting phenomenon to study.